Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Today, we are doing another set review, and this time it is for one of the biggest set releases of the year. It is time to review Topps 2020 Series 2. Okay, so in the 2020 Top Series 2 Set Guide and Review, what we are trying to get to is our sensational set ranking. Now here's what that is. That is one of the most complete rankings you're going to find on all of YouTube for any baseball card set release. I take the set and break it down into 10 different categories. Everything from cost value to the parallels and all sorts of other different categories and we rank them between one and ten and we take all of those individual scores and add them up and that gets us our total score which ends up being the sensational set ranking now here's what that allows us to do it allows us to look at this set so for example tops series uh, two and then we can look at it based upon all of the other rankings to figure out what set was is the best set um, and to figure out how well this set kind of stacks up to other sets in the 2020 baseball card season. So there's a lot to cover off on. Let's get right into it and do the set highlights. First thing you need to know about Topps Series 2 is, is it is Topps' flagship expansion set, and it is loaded with a ton of extras. It's got all sorts of different inserts that are exclusive to retail, to hobby. We'll get into all of those. And then it is the second of three flagship releases for Topps. It's got a 350 card base set checklist, which completes the 700 card complete set for tops 2020 in this series two there are 43 total rookie cards which is down from 51 cards which we had in top series one there's a 12 parallel rainbow which we're going to cover off on in just a minute and i expect there to be more out of retail that haven't been announced yet and then there are rookies current stars and retired grades that are featured throughout the set what you're not going to find prospects so keep that in mind and then we will also bring back the image variations for top series two which have been popular over the last few years so those come back and make and make their return then we also have three new insert sets this for series two which include a player of the decade insert set for mike trout really cool subset there then a new thing for series two which was not in series one if you're buying jumbo boxes you get three silver packs and in one of them you're going to get the chrome decades best cards so that will be chrome versions of the decades best cards cards which were introduced in series one so that's kind of the highlights and what's kind of new with top series two um, so let's cover off on the parallels now so the base set parallels just like series one we're going to have 12 of them you've got rainbow you've got gold foil which you'll only find in hobby jumbo packs you've got gold vintage stock independence day black which is exclusive to hobby you've got fathers and mothers day uh, cards to 50 the camo the clear which is in hobby packs only and then you've also got printing plates and platinum you can see what the independence day looks like at the right now what are the different buying formats? Tons of different ones, guys. Here's what we got. With hobby format, obviously you can buy a case. I'm not covering off on that here, but we do start with the jumbo hobby box. So that's gonna have 10 packs, 46 cards per pack. So a total of 460 cards in that box. Price right now going for around $207. Cost per card on that, about 45 cents per card. You are guaranteed to get one auto and two relics per box. Then you have the two bonus silver packs plus the one bonus chrome decade silver best pack that you are guaranteed to get in Hobby Jumbo. And keep in mind another thing, that is the only place where you can find those gold chrome cards. Then you got the Hobby Box. Now that's going to have 24 packs, 14 cards per pack. You get a total of 336 cards. 
price on those all the way down to $108. So your cost per card creeps down to 32 cents per card. Now you are guaranteed to get one auto or relic. That is not and, it is or. Um, and you do get one bonus silver pack. So that explains the drop in the cost per card price. Now retail gets a little bit more complicated. For retail, we're gonna start out with the ever popular blaster box. That has seven packs, 14 cards per pack, 98 total cards, gonna cost you 20 bucks. Cost per card on that, about 20 cents. And you are guaranteed to get one manufactured relic. Now that is a different relic than what you found in top series one, and we'll cover off on that later. And also keep in mind, depending on where you're buying this, in Walmart, you will find inserts for the Empire State Pete Alonzo. Um, and then at Target, you're going to find Fernando Tatis Jr. highlight cards. And you can get autos out of either of those. So just know, if you're a Pete Alonzo fan, buy that blaster box over at Walmart. If you're a Tatis fan, buy them at Target. And then you get to the hanger box. Hanger box is going to have 67 cards in it, and it's going to be, it says 20 bucks here, but it's actually 11. Um, that's a typo on my part. The cost per card on that is going to be 16 cents, and you are guaranteed to get at least two inserts. Then you get down to the fat pack. That's going to have 34 cards per pack, going to cost you around five bucks. Cost per card on that, uh, a, a tiny 15 cents per card. It's your lowest cost per card that you can get in top series two. And then the, the next two are ones that I want you to pay attention to if you are buying individual packs in retail. So there is the gravity feed pack. Now, here's what comes in the gravity feed, which that's that big box. It's got 36. Uh, it's that big box where they come down. It is different than a display box. Um, so keep that in mind. In the gravity feed pack, you've got 16 cards in the pack and it costs you around $3.50. Cost per card on that is going to be 22 cents, but you do get a Superstars of Baseball insert. Now, in the display box pack, which is very similar, you still get one pack, but it's only 15 cards per pack. Your cost should be a little bit cheaper. It should be around three bucks. So the cost per card goes to 20 cents, but you do not get the insert. So keep that in mind. There are differences in single packs for Series 2. And then there will be more buying formats in this. For example, the tins that we saw in Series 1, those are almost certainly going to make a return soon in, uh, in Walmart. And then you will also get the Walgreens hangers, which I believe are going to continue with the yellow parallels, which were really popular in Series 1. And then there are grocery packs available this year. So you might even be finding these in Ralph's and all sorts, in, in Kroger's and all sorts of different... Um, retail uh, or, or grocery formats as well. So what are the key cards in Series 2? First of all, you end, uh, you, we're going to start with the base card. So card number 359, Domingo Leyva, that is the top's uh, official rookie card for Domingo Leyva. And then we have the Luis Robert. Uh, that is actually a rookie card as well. So that is his first tops flagship rookie card he did have opening day and we've seen lots of luis robert already but his official tops rookie card is going to be in top series 2 2020 then we have shun yamaguchi's rookie card which is card number 449 that is another first rookie that we'll find in top series 2 we have tim lopes who is a uh, fairly high high highly rated prospect in this that is a rookie card as well and then we have chad wallach who is the son of tim wallach we have his rookie card as well in the base set now when we get into parallels autos sps and all of that um, for hobby only we've got the gold foil and the black and the clear i think you're going to be I, I i think a lot of people like those gold foil ones that you get out of hobby jumbo and then the uh black and clear ones that you get out of the hobby packs and uh jumbo packs as well the image variation cards again those are returning people love those cards um they're really cool nice photography that is one thing that i love about uh Topps's flagship set is the photography is just amazing and then of course we've got our 85 all-star autos and chrome autos which are have been popular the last few years and as you can see to the right the celebration of the decades golden ticket is returning i am 
cannot wait to see what Tops does and with the pandemic and how that is hit to see how they handle all of that. But you can get one of 25 tickets um, for the celebration of the decades. Cut signatures are in this set and there are 47 different ones and some of the names are huge. Then I do think that the Mike Trout player of the decade autos are going to be highly sought after. Anytime you get a Mike Trout auto, there's a ton. That's probably one of the biggest draws for the top series too, is the fact that there are a ton of Mike Trout autos in this set. Then we have the in the name relics, and those are going to be relics where you actually get uh, a letter out of a player's name. They're all one of one. So if you get that letter that you are the only one that has that. And then I do think that the decade's best chrome cards that you can only find in silver packs of jumbo hobby uh, boxes, I think those are going to be pretty sought after as well. And finally, we have the Topps 2030 insert set, which is a take off of the 2010 set, which said what who are going to be the big stars in 2020. They're now doing that same thing again, same design on the card from 10 years ago, but now we're saying who's going to be the big stars in 2030. So let's get into these insert sets and we'll fly through these. We'll try and go as quickly as possible. First, we got the 1985 Topps Baseball, going to have 50 cards um, and it's got parallels of blue, black, gold, red, and platinum. And then we've got the All-Stars, which you can see over to the right, which is also the 85 design. Can't wait to see those. And then we've got the Chrome version of the 1985 Topps Baseball um 50 cards in that set and those are only found in silver packs so those are going to be pretty nice as well then you've got the best of now uh best of tops now checklist that's going to have 10 cards you've got the decades best um and that is going to be a hundred card checklist it covers off on the last uh covers off on the last 10 decades and there's 10 cards from each decades and you can see the parallels listed there and then you also have the chrome version of those which are in the jumbo box loaders only we've covered off on that then we continue on you've got draft day medallions and those are going to be 50 cards and those are in hobby and jumbo uh, hobby and hobby jumbo only those have parallels. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we have the Empire State Awards winner inserts. Those are all going to be found in Walmart packs. It's 30 different Pete Alonzo cards. Um, and you're only going to find them at Walmart. Then same thing with the Fernando Tatis highlights cards. You're going to find those in Target packs. And there's 30 different cards to that subset. Then we have our home run challenge uh, cards return again. And the good news is with baseball starting under a little bit of duress, to say the least, um, we can actually start using those home run cards to try and win other cards, 30 cards in that set. Then we have the significant statistics insert, which you can see over to the right. That's the autographed version. However, there are 25 cards in that with a smaller parallel rainbow. And then there are sketch cards in this. Now they're only going to be in hobby and jumbo only, but this uh, the artists are still be determined, and we do not know as of yet who the players are. Those are going to be really hard to pull. If you pull one of those, really long odds, but a really, really, really nice hit. Um, continuing on with inserts, like I said, Series Two has a ton of stuff. We have the tops twenty thirty. That's got 20 cards. You're only going to find them in hobby and hobby jumbo packs. And that is what you see over to the right. That is the 2010 design of the Topps 2020 inserts they had 10 years ago. Then we have the Topps Player of the Decade cards. That's the Mike Trout subset. That's got 25 cards. And there are parallels of blue, black, gold, red, and of course the platinum one of ones. The Turkey Reds return for retail only. There's gonna be a hundred more cards in that with a blue, green, and black parallel rainbow. And the Chrome cards for Turkey Red also return. Then a new subset is the uh, Warriors of the Diamond. That's going to have 50 cards. It's obviously going to touch on war statistics. Um, and so that covers off on our insert sets. So now let's get into all the different auto sets that we can get out of Topps Series 2. First of all, uh, 1985 Topps Baseball. It's going to have 51 cards and uh, a parallel rainbow of black, gold, red, which is only in hobby, and platinum one of ones, which are only in hobby and jumbo hobby. 
Then we've got the All-Star cards, uh, the 1985 Tops All-Star cards with 46 cards. Really nice checklist for Series 2, guys. This is probably one of the better subset checklists out of the whole set. Um, and you can see over to the right, you've got the Mark McGuire over there. That's what the Mark McGuire 85 All-Star card is going to look like in gold. And then we've got the chrome versions of all of those as well, which you're only going to find in those silver packs uh, in the hobby format. And then you've got the baseball stars, uh, which are kind of which are going to be the autos that you find in a lot of these boxes. There's 53 different cards in that set with a parallel rainbow. And that's what the Baseball Stars card looks like right there. Then you've got the Baseball Stars Duel. That's actually a Baseball Stars with two players on it. 24 cards, numbered to five or less. Really long odds on pulling one of those. But some of the uh, dual autos you can get on that are really, really cool. Be sure to check out that set checklist. Then you've got cut signatures. There's 47 different cut signatures in this set, and they're all one of ones. Um, and we're going to go over that when, we, when we're in the team breaks. I'm going to show you the teams you, sh you should be tar targeting in the very long odds that you might actually get one of those. There are some teams that are totally loaded with cut signatures in Series 2. Then we have the Decades Best. That's got 30 cards, and they're all going to be numbered to 25 or less. We've got Draft Day Medallions, and those are going to be 37 cards, and they're all numbered to 10 or less, and those are only going to be found in Hobby and Jumbo Hobby. And then we've got the Empire State Awards winners. Those are the Walmart cards of the Pete Alonzo. So 30 different Pete Alonzo autos that you can pull out of there. Same thing with the Fernando Tatis highlights, only you can get those out of Target packs. Continuing on with our autographs, we've got the Jumbo Special Event Jersey Sleeve Patch. There's going to be 30 cards in that, and they're all going to be numbered to 10 or less, and they are hobby exclusive. You've got the Major League Materials Autos, and those are going to be 42 cards. They're all numbered to 50 or less, and you can get a red and platinum rainbow out of those. And then we've got the Significant Statistics 16 cards, all numbered to 50 or less. You can see that over at the right. And then we've got the Significant Statistic Relic Autos, which are third, th 13 cards, all numbered to 50 or less as well. Then you've got the Topps Player Medallion, and those are 30 cards. And you'll find those in retail blaster boxes, but some of those can be autographed, which is pretty sweet. Continuing on... One of my favorites, we're going to have the Topps Player of the Decade, Mike Trout, 25 cards, um, and they're all numbered to 25 or less. However, there are each one of those has 25 autos, so there are a ton of Mike Trout autos that you can pull out of Topps Series 2. We have the Topps Reverence Autograph Patch. There's going to be 32 cards, and those are Hobby and Hobby Jumbo only. Warriors of the Diamond subset also has an autograph variation to it. 17 cards, each numbered to 25 or less. And then we get into our relics. So here's what we got for relics in Series 2, guys. We've got 1985 Topps Baseball Relics. Those are going to have 49 cards in it. And then we've got the uh, Baseball All-Star Relics. 50 cards in that with a standard parallel rainbow for Series 2. Then we have the In the Name Relics. Now, these are the ones I mentioned earlier where you get a, a literal uh, letter out of a person's jersey. Um, so you get 50 cards out of that, and they are all one of one. However, there's more of them because obviously you spell a person's name with more than one letter. But they would all be considered one of ones. Then you've got the Major League Materials, which is what you're going to find in most of uh, your boxes. There's 40 cards in there with a... Uh, standard parallel rainbow now the platinums are only able to be found in hobby and jumbo only for those major league material inserts then we get to the significant statistic relics um, and those have 20 cards they're all going to be numbered to 99 or less with a red and platinum rainbow then the draft day medallions those are going to be 50 cards which are in hobby and jumbo hobby only those are a manufactured relic you can see it over there at the right and there is a parallel rainbow with those as well. Then you've got the Topps Player Medallions, and those are going to be 50 cards, which you will find in blaster boxes only, and those have a parallel rainbow as well. So, with all that being said, 
Top Series 2 is going to be a big time breaking product. It's got a great price for breakers, a great price for people that buy into breaks. So I expect a ton of people to be breaking this. So if the question becomes, what teams should you be targeting? And are there any sleepers that maybe people aren't paying attention to that you can get into for cheap and reap the rewards? Well, here are my six picks for the teams that I would be chasing out of Top Series 2. First of all, the Boston Red Sox. And the Boston Red Sox have been a little bit cold in most 2020 sets. So people, I think, have been groomed to think that the Red Sox are not that great in the 2020 year. However, looking at the uh, checklist, there are 34 autos, and a lot of those are really nice autos as well. And they have a large relic um breakdown that you can also get so i think the boston red sox are not going to be uh, a, a top five team and if you can get them at the right price if they're kind of a sneaky good team however keep in mind it is the red sox and a lot of people love the red sox so i don't think you're going to get them all that cheap i've got better sleepers for you later but the red sox overall a solid solid hit for um top series two then we've got the Chicago Cubs. They've got 29 autos, and they have a ton of different inserts. I think they've got more inserts than anyone else. So if you're a Cubs fan, this is a great one to be buying into. Plus, you've got a pretty decent chance at getting a Chicago Cubs auto. Now, here is my sleeper pick. Uh, the Cleveland Indians. Now, they've only got 23 autos. They've got a decent amount of base cards in the checklist. However, in the in the long odds chance that you can get one of those cut signatures they've got seven different cut signatures in the set now granted that's only seven cards out of all the ones they've produced but if you hit one of those they they would it would be an amazing hit so a little bit of a sleeper a little bit of a a little bit of a hail mary pick there but i think the indians are not a bad team to get overall and then, of course, you've got the Angels. Look, there's a ton of Trout Autos. The Angels are probably going to be the most expensive team to buy into just because of the fact that there are so many different Mike Trout Autos that you can get in this set. So um, when I say there's tons of Trout Autos, I mean it. There are tons of Trout Autos. Um, then you've got the New York Mets. They've got 24 autos. And then keep in mind, if you're buying into retail um, or if you're buying into like a retail break, the Mets are, the Mets and the Padres, really, uh, because you can get so many different Pete Alonzo cards and you can get so many different Tatis cards that if you hit one of those autos in a retail break, the Mets are going to be amazing because they also have a decent number of autos standard set. And finally, another sort of sleeper team, the St. Louis Cardinals. You've got 30 different autos that you can get out of that out of that Cardinals team, and they have six different cut signatures. So the Cardinals may not even be a top team, a top 10 team off the board or most expensive team, but the Cardinals definitely, definitely kind of a, I, I think will be a sleeper on this one, and one that I would strongly consider buying if you're buying into breaks. So, who should be collecting Top Series 2? Well, obviously, traditional collectors. This is Top's flagship set. Uh, this is when people think baseball cards, people think Tops, and then people think, just show me the Tops flagship set. Um, so, Top Series 1, Series 2, and Update. So, that definitely traditional collectors. And then set collectors. This is one of the funnest sets to collect in the year. You mix it with Series 1, you mix it with Update, you end up with... A ton of cards and you end up with almost every player that played in the major leagues in the in the 2020 season and then i also think the image variation chasers this is uh tops flagship set is the best set for all sorts of image variations you've got the short prints the shoot the, the super short prints um and they're all over the board they're fun to chase they're fun to look at and then you've also got like the advanced statistics uh variations as well tons of different variations and and then with retail, I think retail people are going to be real hot, uh, happy with Series 2. There's a ton of retail exclusives. Those Fernando Tatis, the Pete Alonzo's um, exclusive uh, uh, inserts and whatnot. So definitely retail shoppers, very approachable set. And rookie card chasers. Um, this is the rookie card that people are going to look for most. So if there's a rookie in here that ends up bubbling to the top later on, um, this will be the one that... Uh, average collectors and people that maybe don't dive as deep into the hobby 
this is going to be the set that they're looking for. They're not going to go looking for Heritage. They're not going to go looking for Topps Finest or something like that. They're going to show, say Topps 2020 Rookie Card X, and this will be the card that shows up. And I also think that young collectors should definitely collect Topps flagship set. It is the set that will introduce them to the hobby better than any other set. It's an inexpensive set to buy into. The cards have a ton of information on the back. They're totally infor uh, informative. And with all the different inserts and all the different uh, uh, the, the, the history that they show in the set, it is a very fun set to collect. And it is a set that will get cards, uh, get kids addicted to cards for years and years to come so then the question becomes who shouldn't collect top series two i would say first and foremost big hit chasers a lot of those investors look there you can hit big cards in here but the odds are so long because the production is so high that there's just better hits that you can chase uh versus buying box after box after box also if you chase prospects no prospects in the set stick with bowman keep chasing the bowman prospects uh but if, but top series two if you only collect prospects this is not for you i also am going to say something that might be uh, uh a travesty to some i think that if you chase autos you should steer clear of this set the set has never been driven by autos and yes they do give you the hits um and some of them are really nice um, and some of them can become really valuable, but a lot of them are sticker. And I do think that there are better sets that you can buy into if you're looking for autos um, and autos that might actually be worth more than some of the autos you would find in here. So for me, for the prices, for the price of uh, over $100 per an auto, um, I, I mean, to guarantee yourself an auto, you got to buy one of those uh jumbo boxes and those are over 200 dollars right now there's a lot of other sets where you can get a lot of autos or a lot cheaper than that and then the only other people that should be collecting this is i don't really know um it's such a wide appeal set that if you don't like tops flagship set i really do have to ask you like what is it that you do like about the hobby this is kind of the, a, a cornerstone set and if you don't like this set you, you maybe need to find a different hobby so what are the top series two positives for me this is a, a, a historically significant um product the tops flagship set it's the defining set of every baseball card season um, it, it is the set that everyone, casual collectors and uh, experienced collectors alike, uh, they all they all will gravitate towards this set. It is the set that most people grew up with. Um, so for me, that's always been a positive. And then in this odd year that we've had in 2020, I do think that Topps did a pretty decent job of making the set feel interesting and new, even though there's been nothing that has happened in baseball other than a bunch of bickering about money. Um, and then I do think that in series two, they pulled out that decades theme a lot better than they did in series one. Um, so I think that's a positive as well. And then I do think they, uh, tops did a pretty good job at giving people good reasons to buy into both retail and hobby retail has its own set of exclusives and hobby has its own set of exclusives. And I like that hobby being more expensive. They made the exclusive set and uh, the exclusive stuff and hobby feel a little bit more, uh, fancy, if you will, uh, if you will, but the retail stuff is also no nothing to uh, snuff your nose at either. And then I do like that, even though the prices are slightly inflated on this, Top Series Two has not inflated all that much. So, but I think we're finally starting to see sets kind of average out to what they actually are worth, not what the speculation on them is. So it's affordable. You're going to be able to find this stuff cheap everywhere. And then the inserts this year and the auto sets, all of them are really fun. You've got a whole bunch of different ones. Um, so a really, really fun insert sets. I think the packs are going to be fun to open. So here's my negatives. And this one I think is the big one that is the big negative for top series two. When you look at the rookie card class, because we have not had players come up and we don't know how good these players are going to be at the major league level. The rookie card class is very weak as of now in this set. Uh, Luis Robert is about the only big rookie card to chase. There's a couple other cards that you can chase in there. Not that it's totally void of anyone else that you would chase. However, normally sets in future value you're gonna look at well how many rookie cards can i get in that think like the 2018 tops update series 
I do not believe that 2020 Top Series 2 is going to end up being a set like that just because the rookies that are coming up, um, they haven't come up yet. So all of those big rookies that you might have seen in a normal year, like Joe Adele probably would have been in Top Series 2, you are not going to see them because they have not been called up yet. But I think the rookie class is a little weak. And then I also think that the relics seem tired. Um, the relics have been around, the Major League Material stuff. It's a, it's a bland design, um, and, and the relics just need, the, and I, I think I said it for Series 1 too, the relics need a serious refresh, um, and Tops needs to figure out what they're doing with the relic lineup. Um, they do a great job in some sets, but in this set, it's just, I, I don't know, I'm not a fan. Um, the other thing is because it's in retail, because it's in hobby, and because it is a flagship set, it's got a huge production run, and it is higher than ever before because they are now even going into grocery uh, for this year. So a lot of people getting into the hobby, so they're trying to meet the demand, and they're going to do that with the flagship set. And then the manufactured relics, um, those actually count as a hit in the hobby format, which I think should not be a thing. If you're going to say that you get a relic, it should not be a manufactured one. If I got a hobby box with a manufactured relic as my hit, um, that's a little disappointing. Then finally, there are sticko, uh, sticker autos mixed heavily throughout uh, with on-card autos throughout the set. I do think that it's the flagship set that they could invest a little bit more and say, hey, look, we're going to make sure most of these, if not all of them, are on-card autos and they had not done that. So... That brings us to our one cent sensational set rating. So let's take the, let's take a look at top series two. Here's how here's our ten different categories, and we'll go over all of them here pretty quick. Um, for appeal, look, this is a flagship set. Everyone likes the flagship set, and if you don't, there's something wrong with you. So for appeal, I think everyone likes it, um, and I think everyone expects it, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a 9. Uh, the base set checklist, I'm going to give it a 7. The rookie cards are, are fairly weak in my opinion, but you never know. Some of these rookies could end up being huge later, but for now, I think that the rookie card uh, checklist is a little weak, and so I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7. Um, the inserts... I, I like a lot of the inserts. Um, I like that they've got the autos. I like that they've got the advanced statistics. I think they really pull out kind of the spirit of what baseball is supposed to be. So I'm going to give them a 7.5. In the parallels and variations, I'm going to give it a 7. And the reason I'm going there is I'm putting relics in with that as well. Um, not a big fan of the relics in Series 2. However, I do like that they have a solid rainbow, and that rainbow is really valuable if you pull some of the valuable cards in there. And we do have the image variations, which are second to none in the hobby. So I'll go ahead and give it a seven overall. The auto checklist. There's a ton of different autos in here, which helps this set and hurts it. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a seven. Tons of Mike Trout cards, also a ton of filler. Our pack odds and productions, I'm taking that all the way down to a two. They're going to produce a ton of this stuff. Um, so when we look at pack odds, they're going to be really long. And when we look at the production run, that's going to be really large. So uh, I go ahead and give that a two. Card quality, look, it is, it's the standard tops card. It isn't the best quality, but it's very nice quality, for especially for the uh, cost per card. So I'll go ahead and give it a seven. Historical value of this set, this set holds up well. This is the flagship set. It commands a higher dollar, especially for in-demand cards, than almost any other set outside of maybe Bowman. Um, so the historical value, I'll give it a 7.5. Artistic value for this set, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 6.5. I'm not the biggest fan of the 2020 Tops uh, uh, Series uh, 2 design, but I do think that there are uh, some of the... Um, some of the subsets and whatnot and the turkey red um i actually like some of those so i'll go ahead and give it a 6.5 and then i do think a look for their flagship set the cost value on this i'm going to give it a nine i it, it's inexpensive the prices haven't been inflated that much it pretty much anyone can get into this set at almost any price point that they want to and they can get some really cool cards so i'll go ahead and give it a nine so Here's how this works. We're going to add all these scores up and it's going to give us a rating of one to five stars based upon the total score that they got. So what did Top Series 2 get in the one cent sensational set rating? It ended up being a 69.5. 
So that puts it at a low four star set. Kind of borderline three star, but not bad, all things considered, especially being in a COVID year where they had to get a little bit creative about how do we make this set new. So how does this uh, Tops Series 2 stack up with all of the other sets to date? Well, it lands in fifth place and knocks Don Ross Baseball, their flagship that came out earlier this year, off of our top 10 list. So Don Ross Baseball has fallen off, which I know a lot of people are going to comment and tell me that that is a travesty and that I should have it rated higher than Tops Heritage. I don't disagree in hindsight. Just, just to throw that out there. However, Top Series 2 gets a 69.5. Comes in kind of right near Top Series 1, which was a 68.5. Uh, but um, Bowman Baseball still leads the pack. And then Panini Prism, which came out last week, that's a, at a solid 63. Panini Select, uh, or 73, and Panini Select is also a 73. And then Topps Gypsy Queen, which I still think is the surprise set of the year, still standing strong at 72. But Top Series 2 does enter our top five in our top 10 set rankings to date. So you guys, if you like these set reviews, throw over to first. Hit that like button for me and be sure to subscribe. We do these set reviews all the time. Um, so if you want to be up to date on what all of these sets have to offer and to be real informed if you're buying into breaks or if you're going over to your uh, LCS, definitely, definitely hit that subscribe button and be sure to hit that bell so you can get the review as soon as it comes out. We also do a whole bunch of other stuff on this channel. We do card, uh, if we do card uh, flipping advice, we do all sorts of live breaks um, and some more fun stuff as well. So you guys, thank you for watching. Comment below, let me know if you are getting into any top series two and what cards you will be chasing. And until next time, I hope you are having good luck on your pack rips and we will talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching.